So I'm working on my, um, I keep calling it acorn and I apologize. I, I started out knitting on this block and at first I thought it did look like acorns, but I've been calling it raindrops because that's really what it looks like. But anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to use some different colors, but I really like the Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday Worsted. I really like the feel of it. I like the look of it. And um, I have some more colors coming, but when I was at Joann's, um, I came across this Lion Brand um, basic stitch, which is anti-pilling also, and it kind of has the same look and feel as the, um, this is the Premier. So it kind of has the same, it almost has like a shimmery um, to it. It, it. I mean, um, but this is the Lion Brand, this is the Premier. Um, it feels the same, it looks the same. Now, I have not washed this and tried it, but if you have tried this basic stitch by Lion Brand, if you could let me know what you think about it. Um, and it's a, it's the same, it's a four, <clears throat> 3.5 ounces. So these were on sale at Joann's. Um, I think they were one of their Black Friday um, deals, so they were really cheap. They were like a dollar something. Um, so I got four of them, and let's see, the colorways are, this is baby pink, this is steel blue, which I think is beautiful, I love that color, <clears throat> this is, this is a beautiful, this is olive, so it looks kind of brown in the camera, but this is a really kind of a dark green. And then I got this beautiful golden color. This is mustard. So I thought these look really pretty together. So anyway, I'm going to try them out and see how they work up. <clears throat> may wash one just to see how it wears after being washed and dried because you know Yarn always feels different after you wash it and dry it. Um, I've tried other Lion Brand yarns before, but not this one. Anyway, we will see how that works up. But I just got home from work and I am working on this. I'm really, I really need to get faster at knitting. <laughs> I'm so slow at it still. But I think the more I practice, the faster it'll get. <clears throat> and sometimes I just don't knit because I'm so slow. But the more I do it, the faster it will get. Or the faster I will get. So I really need to do that. Really need to work at that. <clears throat> or maybe it's they find one or the other easier. I don't know. I find that crochet is easier for me, but you may find knitting easier, I don't know. But I just know I do need to get faster at it. I am really slow at knitting. And there are certain crochet projects that I'm slower at also. but. Um, it just depends. But I was thinking that I would try and see if I could get one of these blocks done in a day because this afghan would go a lot quicker <laughs> if it didn't take me um, three months to, <laughs> to knit one block. Now I do work on other projects in between so it's not just this one, but um, I have been keeping track in my notebook when I start a block and when I finish it. Um, so I started this particular block 
November 23rd, and it's now January. Now, to my credit, this black is much more difficult to see. So there are certain times I don't even want to work on it. Um, because it takes a lot of focus and concentration. I think I may need glasses. I think my eyes are giving me more trouble because I need help. <laughs> but, um, let's see, my other block, I started October 8th and finished it November 22nd. See, it's taking me, um, almost two months to knit one of these blocks. So, my first one I started September, September 12th, is that right? That's pretty bad. An experienced knitter may be able to do this in a, well, I'm not going to compare myself because I'm not an experienced knitter, but anyway, all that to say. I need to get faster. My daughter wanted to make a little crochet heart and we found a little uh, tutorial on YouTube and um, she said she wanted to learn how to make a small crochet object. So I was like, okay, well, what would you like to make? And she said, um, I was, I was kind of going through the list. You need an absolute beginner tutorial. And she saw this one and she wanted to try it. So um, however, she does not know any stitches. She just knows how to chain. So I said, you really need to practice your stitches, learning how to stitch single crochet, double crochet, stuff like that. <clears throat> Half double, if you want to learn how to actually make something. <clears throat> so anyway, I made this, which is so cute. Um, but I, I directed her to towards a video where she could learn how to make a crochet coaster and I thought that that would be easier for her. I said I started out making coasters. I think this will be really beneficial for you. So she wasn't too thrilled about that but I'm, I'm excited she wants to try and I'm going to encourage her in that because I think that's wonderful. I think it would be really good for her. Um, I know it was frustrating when I first started um, but I think if she keeps at it, I think she'll be a whiz at it. So, yeah. But I think she just, she's like me. She wants to jump in and just make some wonderful things. And I was like, but you've got to learn the basics first. You've got you to gotta start <laughs> at the beginning. You can't just jump in the middle. But I understand her feeling. When I, when I uh, started crocheting, I wanted to make an afghan right away. But I had to start out with all these little small projects, dishcloths, coasters, you know, all kinds of little nothing things. Well, they're not nothing, but, you know, to me, I was like, I want to make an afghan. I don't want to waste my time sitting here making coasters and dishcloths, but you're not wasting your time. You're learning, but at the same time, you know, I, I was impatient. And that, But I would really like to teach my girls... Um, knitting, sewing, crochet, whatever they're in, interested in, the things that I know how to do, and cooking, baking, stuff like that. It's very important. <laughs> but you can't force them either. <laughs> They've got to have some kind of interest to be able to learn it, so, or, you know, it's not going to happen. So, I will put a link in the description box down below if you would like to try out this cute little crochet heart because <laughs> I think it's adorable. Very easy to make. And the yarn she picked out, she loved this. She wanted some pink yarn, so she picked that out herself. <laughs> <sighs> so I haven't gotten very far. That's it. That's okay. So I will let you know how this goes. Maybe I'll do a challenge for myself. Try to knit one of these in a day. <clears throat> so.
also I wanted to share the uh, finished blanket. Um, I know I've been talking about this a lot, but this is the pattern that I had lost and I found it. Then I lost it again. Then I found it again. <laughs> so this was the Christmas, it's called the Christmas Merriment Afghan and it is a Afghan kit that I purchased from Hershner's. So this is what the pattern looked like or started out to look like. And this is the finished product right here. And I used, if you remember, I used a lot of different uh, blocks to um, kind of piece it together. Um, these were the original uh, solid granny blocks and then these were the spiral ones. Um, and then I added lots of different blocks to it. But it is done. I decided instead of packing it away for another 11 months that I would just use what I had, not make any more blocks like I had originally planned, and just put it together. So this is it. It's it's all done. It's, it's more of a lap gan. It's not a full-size blanket, and I'm okay with that. Because like I said, um, I started this last fall. <laughs> not last fall but last last fall so back in 22 I started this <laughs> um, so it was time to finish it and um, there it is there it is so I what I did was I just took the blocks that I had I pieced them together um, I weaved in the last bit of ends and then I put a very simple border around it. Um, I did do some fancy stuff on the uh, corners, but other than that I just did a very simple border um, just so that the main part of the blanket would be the the, um, the centerpiece or whatever. It would, it would be the eye-catching. <laughs> so here it is. It has lots of different blocks from lofts, lots of different patterns. If you are interested in um, the blocks that I used, the patterns that I used, um, I will link a video up here or up here <laughs> uh, to um, the video that I that I did share all of the different patterns and blocks I used. But here it is. And I still have quite a bit of yarn left. This was the bin that I was keeping everything in, and I still have quite a bit of yarn left. Um, so I can use this for something else. Um, but these were the three colors. So there was the eggnog, um, the candied, which was the red, and then uh, this was linen. Linen, and then fern. So I still have quite a bit left. And I'm going to keep it all together with the pattern so I don't lose those again. Although I may lose it again. So, and I will pop in a video um, of the blanket so you can see it because I can't hold it up in front of the camera so you can see it all at once. But I will share that um, I will pop that in. But I wanted to share a couple other things really fast. Um, I, I'm sure you all have heard of the Red Heart All-in-One Granny, this new yarn. Um, so I purchased this. I found it at uh, Joann's and this is what it is. It's All-in-One Granny Square Red Heart uh, yarn and I chose this colorway and I chose this colorway and before I read the directions on these uh, what, what hook size to use um, I started out I used a 5.5 millimeter hook um, so this is with the Moody Cherry and as you can see it did stay pretty true to the granny um, although there are some parts where it it kind of didn't um, hopefully the lighting is catching it um, but anyway then I looked on the back of the uh, label and it said to use a five millimeter hook 
So I said, okay, well maybe that was the problem. So I used a five millimeter hook and it didn't, it, it kind of did worse. <laughs> you can see how um, the colors didn't really stay true to the granny uh, design. Now it may all depend also on which granny square um, pattern you're using. I just used one from memory. Um, I did put a chain one space in between my clusters. Some people do not. That may make a difference and also between the clusters and the corner I did a chain two. Some people do a chain three. So I think it all depends on uh, the stitch count um, and how many stitches you are using. So um, as you can see some of the blue was coming through. Um, so this is, it didn't really stay true to it. Um, and then I tried the five millimeter hook. It did a little bit better, but it still was not, was not true uh, to the, if this bothers you, then don't use it. <laughs> um, this didn't really bother me. Um, I mean, unless you're wanting it to look exactly like a real granny square. Um, then yes, I can see how that would be a problem, but it, it, it it's fine. It didn't bother me. Um, I really want to try this though in a knitting pattern and see how this looks knit up because I'm really interested because each strand of color is a different length. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the label because the label is black, but you can see that each at the bottom it has each strand of color is uh, a different length um, because you're going to start out with the blue in the middle and then it goes to the other colors so each color length is a little bit longer if that makes sense um, so I'm just really curious how this would look in a knit pattern <laughs> um, also I wanted to share oh hi puppy <laughs> come here come here maybe the puppy will come say hi come here will come say hi Wanna come say hi? No? Okay. Um, also, I wanted to share, um, I found some Pioneer Woman crochet hooks at Walmart. I, I don't know if you like Pioneer Woman um, uh, cookware and stuff. I do. I know she's had some yarn. I have not tried the yarn, but I found this crochet hook set, which I thought were just lovely. And it came with, uh, let's see, I think it's eight hooks in all. No, seven. Seven crochet hooks. No, there's another one behind me. I'm using it in a project. So there were eight total, eight crochet hooks. And they are beautiful. I really like them, and I have used them. Um, so I'm very happy with them. However, The only drawback is um, I was looking on them for uh, the size millimeter hook they are, and I could not find it anywhere. Well, then I found some at the bottom, this, this indentation, and I had to use a pencil to actually color over it, and then, oh, there it was. There was the size of the crochet hook. So that is not... I don't really like that. That is the only drawback, but these are beautiful hooks. They're comfortable. They do a great job. I like them. Um, but what I will do, I think I will write on a piece of tape and maybe wrap the tape around the crochet hook so I know what size they are because I'm not good at guessing. I really want to know exactly what crochet hook or what size crochet hook I am using. So that is the only drawback. Um, they did have another one that was that had more, um, but they were just the plain metal hooks. Um, they weren't anything fancy. These are kind of fancy. Um, these were $24.97, so $25. You get eight hooks. Um, one is behind me in another project, um, and they only had one design, but I, I, th I still think they're quite lovely. I think they're very pretty. Um, I like the rose gold um, instead of the silver. Um, or, you know, plain colored crochet hooks. So, if you're looking for something fun and fancy, there it is. Okay, 
Um, oh, I have one more thing to share with you. So if you will give me just a minute, and I will go. Okay, so this is Cascade Yarns Anthem Rondo. So this is, isn't that gorgeous? So it's got two shades of green, two shades of red, gray, and um, yeah, that's all. This colorway is called Holidays, and it is just beautiful, very soft. This is very lovely yarn. Um, I got three um, cakes of it, and so I started that. I started another Christmas afghan. <laughs> this may take me another two years, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, I had given her, we swapped um, pattern books, and uh, the one that I gave her, she started on, and she used a Premier cake roll that I had given her. If you want to check her out, it is um, Stitched Becca, Special Stitch Becca. Um, I will put her handle on the screen from Instagram, but anyway, so you can see it, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, so anyway, and I asked her how it was, and she said it was really fun and, and not too difficult. So I actually looked it up and found it, and I started it. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're, we're twins. <laughs> but anyway, but I started it with the Christmas yarn. So this is what it is looking up, it is looking like so far. And I really, really like it. I think it's lovely. I did put in some white. This was not in the cake roll. There's no white in it. I added this white um, just, just as, I don't know, just as... Uh, you know, to look like snow, I don't know. But I really like how it's working up. It's pretty easy, and it goes quick, and it's lovely. I really, really like it. So it's just, it starts out in a circle, it goes to a square, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So anyway, so there's that. So this will probably be my Christmas blanket 2024. <laughs> so if you want to uh, keep updated on that, or keep an eye out. I will be finishing that later. All right. So I think that's all I had to share with you today. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned for that video of the Christmas blanket. <laughs>